Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Hello and praise the Lord. I'm Steve Wright, the bishop that Jesus loves. And I would like to welcome you to the early word broadcast. Was the best thing I've ever, ever done. We're praying. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 1. We're looking at the message. Watchfulness while others sleep. The world at large is sleeping. They are unconscious. They do not know the signs of the times. While the world is asleep, the church must be awake and the church must be watching. I want to talk about the church. There is the visible church. Jesus spoke about that visible church like the net that is cast into the sea and gathers a lot of fish. And then as he brings everything to shore, he examines everything. And the bad ones were cast back into the sea. And the good ones preserved for the fisherman. That net draws all the fish, good and bad. That's the visible church. But the church within the larger church. That's the invisible church. That's the real body of Christ. Those are the people that know that Christ died for them. And they're living in expectancy of the coming of the Lord. That church is awake. But the larger church is asleep. Watchfulness while others sleep. People in the same congregation. There are those in the same congregation. And sometimes we refuse or we neglect to make the difference. The congregation is an open assembly that brings in quite a lot of people. And some of those in the congregation, some of them are awake. Some of them are sleeping. The retreat like this brings together many, many people from different areas of life. Some are real, genuine Christians. Others are just retreat attendants. They increase the crowd. They might be sleeping, but some are watching and they are awake. Watchfulness, you'll decide it for yourself. Which group, which assembly, which part you belong to. Those who are watching or those who are sleeping, or this we know, a part is awake, the other part is asleep. And with that understanding, in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. There are people 
writers and authors. There are people, supposed teachers and preachers that tell us that before the Lord comes, there will be a mighty worldwide revival that will sweep everybody into the kingdom and then Christ will come because the church Christ is coming for according to them it's not a small church because Christ is coming for a revived church and almost the whole world will be swept into that church before he comes Jesus Christ himself gives them the lie he tells them they're telling lies. We're ready to over and over. As the days of Noah were, is a minority that got in. As the days of Lot were, is a minority that went in. And when somebody asked, Are there few that shall be saved? And Jesus answered and said, Strive to enter in, because many will try to enter in. They will not be able. That's why the word of God is reminding us. When they shall say. Those writers. Those authors. Those teachers. Those preachers. Those false prophets. When they shall say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction comes upon them. As travail upon a woman. Or child. And they shall not escape. But she, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. That's it. Let's watch while others sleep. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Watch while others sleep. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But, let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us believers to us, but to obtain salvation, the final salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. You'll find that word sleep in many in different verses of that passage I have read to you now. Look at verse 7 that talks about natural sleep. We sleep in the night. We walk during the day. And when the body is fatigued and weary and tired, we need sleep. That's natural sleep. Verse 7. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, they go to their night clubs and they are drunken in the night. There is natural sleep. There's another kind of sleep. You're still alive. You're still awake. We're not talking of night. We're not talking of physical weariness. We're talking of something spiritual. You're not conscious of the signs of the times. You're not conscious of many things happening around you. The coming of the Lord is very near, imminent. You're not even thinking about it. You carry on life as if life is forever. You might be dying tomorrow. You're not conscious. You do not understand that your time on earth is short. Spiritual sleeping for six. Therefore, 
let us not sleep as do others. He says, don't be, don't be that unconscious. Be very conscious about things around you. And be conscious that what is going to happen will happen. If you are not ready, it will take you unawares. Let us not sleep. Let's be awake. Let's listen to the Spirit. Let's know what the Lord is saying. Let's see the signs the Lord is showing us. At this time, let us not sleep. That's talking about spiritual sleeping. There's another one. That's perpetual sleep. And David slept with his fathers. And Isaac slept with his fathers. And Jeroboam slept and was gathered together with his fathers. That's perpetual sleep. That's the sleep people take and they're gone. They're not to come back. And that's why the Bible talks about those who are asleep. They slept in Christ. That means they died. Look at verse 10. Who died for us. Talking about Christ. That whether we wake or sleep. Whether we wake or sleep. We should live together with him. It says if we die in the Lord. We we'll sleep. We we'll be with him. If we are awake. And he comes in the rapture. We are awake and we go with him. Whether we are among the people. That will die before the Lord comes. We will sleep in Christ. When he comes, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then all we are among the people that will still be awake. And still be alive. When he comes, we shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. And so he's talking about those who sleep perpetually. One, natural sleep. Two, spiritual sleep. Three, perpetual sleep in death. Come back to verse 1. The old passage is talking about the coming of the Lord. But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's talking about... The coming of the Lord. And he said, because of the certainty, because of the prophecy, and because of the assurance we have that Christ is coming. Don't sleep. Be awake. Watch. So that day will not come upon you unawares. Because it's going to come upon the people of the world unawares, unprepared, they will not even be aware of what was, what is happening. That's why the Lord is calling you and I, every one of us, to watchfulness. Watchfulness while others sleep. Three things we're going to talk about. Number one, warriors lost through carnal, sinful sleep. Warriors we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers. We are soldiers of Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are warriors. And there are warriors who have been lost because of carnal, sinful sleep. Number two, warning against condemned Selfish sleep. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. You are appointed to be a watchman. You are appointed and the security of a whole group of people depends on you. And the Lord has given you the grace as well as the responsibility. But you, come, you become selfish, thinking about yourself. A little tiredness, a little weariness, 
a little fatigue? You do not consider the responsibility the Lord has given you. And because of that selfishness, which is condemned by the Lord, you go to sleep. And then something happens, something negative, something destructive, something that draws people away from the kingdom happens and many of the people you want to watch over they are lost warning against condemned selfish sleep number three watchfulness against careless spiritual sleep just be careless you are not doing the right thing at the right time you become unconscious. You forget yourself. You live a sleep. There is nothing to be done for the day. Or for the week. Or for the year. You live from day to day. You are spiritually asleep. You are walking about. But you do not even know what you are stumbling at. It says, watch. Against careless spiritual sleep one by one number one warriors lost through carnal sinful sleep now we know that we're warriors Ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6 reading from verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood we're fighting, we're asleep, we're contending. And if you say you don't want to fight, your enemy is the devil. You're not fighting flesh and blood. You're fighting principalities and powers. They're always awake. They're always at it. They're always fighting. They're always looking for people they will devour. And so if you sleep, we're going to lose you. As a warrior from the army of the Lord. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the personalities we are fighting against. Those are the people. And those are the systems. We're fighting against the same way for in verse 13. Take unto you the whole armor of God that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, the day of battle, and the day of, the day of conflict, and the day of contention, and the day when you ought to put on the armor in that evil day and fight to conquer. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins got about for truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. You need that yourself personally. The faith of another person will not be enough for you. The face of the prayer warriors will not be enough for you. The face of your pastors will not be enough for you. Yourself. You have, you have to have personal faith before you can be saved. You need to have personal faith before you can be sanctified. And you need to have personal faith before you are baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost. You need to have personal faith before you can overcome the tempter. You need that personal faith before you can be an overcomer, a conqueror more than a conqueror. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able personally to 